What's good, everybody? This is Mad Black, the most dangerous, most toxic black male on the internet, and I am black up in your face again with some more pro-black commentary. So very recently, they have released a brand new film about the artist Elvis Presley, and from what I understand, both his family and close friends, they all seem to love this film, and that, you know, for what the media is saying, Elvis is portrayed in a great light in this film, all right? And, you know, I, I guess I can't get mad at white people for wanting to celebrate someone they consider to be the greatest, quote-unquote. We all know, black people know that Elvis was probably one of the greatest thieves in music history and not really anything special, especially when you compare him to some of our great artists that were actual innovators and creators or something. All Elvis did was copy something that he saw somewhere and white people ate it up, basically. So, but that's just the way it goes. We create something and we do something that's usually demonized first, seen as just that that N-word music, just that black music. They or they categorize it as jungle music or something like that. And they say it's nothing good, it's trash, it's nothing worth uh, wasting your time over, uh, there's nothing creative about it. But as soon as white people get a hold of it, somehow it is elevated to some sort of great art form then once they decide that it's something that they deem or something that they can learn to do. Then all of a sudden it's something good. And it usually happens in stages where the black music, musicians create an art form. The older white generation doesn't like it just because they don't like black people. But what happens is the younger white generation starts to latch on to it. They like listening to it. Sometimes they don't want to tell their parents they're listening to it. They kind of hide it from their parents because it's, it's almost seen as something subversive because black people are doing it. So it's, it's you know, quote unquote taboo. So for them to listen to it and be into it, it's almost like as a way for them to rebel against their parents. And then certain select white folks in that young group start doing that type of music. And then that music becomes popular amongst them. And they start and they basically push the black artist away out of popularity and only listen to the white artists who are doing that art form. It's happened so many times, it's ridiculous by now. We should we should black people should know better by now. Because it's happened with jazz. It's happened uh, with rock and roll, and it's definitely happened with hip hop. It almost somewhat happened with R and B. I, I guess technically it did happen with R and B because the white version of R and B is basically what pop music is. Okay, in the eighties and nineties, they made their quote unquote pop music. That's basically uh, black R and B music. Okay, same thing with uh, what they call techno. That's basically that was basically our house and disco music, right? So, you know, these things happen all the time with every musical trend that comes up. And like I said before, we should know better by now. But, you know, just to give you an example of this, one of my friends posted this article from, I believe it was the 1930s. And basically, this music editor is saying that jazz is on its way out. And he's talking down on it saying, you know, it's, there's nothing great about it. There's nothing innovative about it. He says, uh... He, he literally says in the quote, there's a thin line of melody in it under which there is that bump, bump, bump of the African jungle. He said, because of this sickening lack of variety, the public is already beginning to turn away, not only here, but in Europe also. So he's saying jazz is on its way out. This is like the, the late 1930s, I believe. And, you know, like I said, they always talk down on jazz, saying there's nothing great about it. That's when they were still trying to tout their music as something good, like the waltz and uh, what do you call it? like classical music. They're trying to tout themselves as, as something great. But then the younger generation got into jazz. You start seeing white jazz musicians pop up, like big bands like Benny Goodman and whatnot. Then all of a sudden, jazz becomes the musical art form in America. And white people take it over. And a lot of those original jazz musicians got put, uh, black jazz musicians got either pushed out or they had to buckle down and be up under white folks, or the white folks would control whatever music they made or put out, right? So, like, like I said, great example of what I'm talking about, how these things work. Uh, another example I want to give you is this video I found 
that's really interesting, and I'm glad I saw it. It's an interview with the late, great Ray Charles, an actual innovator in music. Uh, a, a good indicator for being an innovator in music is if music is one way before you show up and is completely different after you show up. Ray Charles is one of those artists, completely original, an, an amazing artist, a, an exceptional musician and composer who made a lot of great music and changed the way music was being performed and done. But this is an interview with him when he's older. I think this is in the 80s, early 80s. And first, the white interviewer is asking them, like, how were the how do you feel about those white musicians that were basically copying black artists in your day and they were making more money than than your contemporaries? He asked them about that. And then they switch over to talking about Elvis. And you're going to hear Ray Charles in his old age speak some truth. So let me see if I can turn it up, make sure the volume's good, and let's listen to this interview. Popping R&B stuff and selling more records than you and your contemporaries. So he's at, for the first thing he's asking them is how do you feel about uh, the white people doing R&B stuff and selling more money than you and your contemporaries? Like This is like way back when Ray first started. I just didn't object to it. I just felt that the music just it wasn't that good to care about. <laughs> so Ray said he doesn't really get too bothered by it because he said the music wasn't that good any damn way. He said it wasn't even that good to care about. So he didn't really consider those white artists competition in that regard. And I can understand that because Ray was very popular during his time. So he probably never lost any money over these devils trying to copy him. But, you know, uh, this interview is going to then say, uh, but there were some exceptions, right? Some exceptional artists out there. He's going to say Elvis Presley, and Ray's going to get real raw on him. Elvis was a talented guy. Maybe some exceptions, though. I mean, Elvis was a talented guy. Well. <laughs> so the, the interviewer says, well, he said there were some exceptions, right? Elvis was a talented guy. And Ray, like, breathes in and then says, well. You know, when when old black people say, well, like that, you know something's about to happen, right? You know they're about to say something that's, that's off the chain because my grandparents do this all the time. My my grandmother still does it when I talk to her sometimes and she wants to tell me the truth about something. That's that's what it is. They start with, well, like that. <laughs> that that's why I was laughing when I first saw this video. Just I was like, I, I, I already know what's coming. So let me rewind that and just let it play. Who's a talented guy? Well... Uh, okay. Not necessarily. You know better than I. Yeah. Let, yeah. Me, let me ask you differently. How good was Elvis? What Elvis did, he called a lot of the populists, if you want to say, usually when people say populists, they usually mean white people, uh, to start listening to a lot of music that normally they wouldn't have been listening to. I guess I'm going to lose uh, at least about a third of my fans right now. But to say that Elvis was... was uh, so great and so outstanding, uh, like they say, he's the king. Uh, I got I got in trouble because one guy asked me this question and I said, the king of what? And he got mad at me. I don't think of Elvis like that because I know too many artists that are far, much, far greater than Elvis. I think Elvis was person came along at the right time for him as a white kid. That could be rock and roll or rhythm and blues or whatever name you want to call it. And the girls could swoon over him. And that Cole got in trouble in Alabama when the women swooned over him. Got put out of town. And black people were going out shaking their behind for, for, for centuries. Air sales don't use about that shaking their heads and stuff. And that's all Elvis was doing was copying that. And he was doing our kind of music. He was doing the Willie Mae Thorn, Jailhouse Rock. Black so, what the hell am I supposed to get so excited about, man? <laughs> so, yeah, so like I said, Ray gave it to him raw there. And like I said, he was in his old age. Uh, his career had been whatever it was going to be. I don't think he really cared, you know, what what people were going to do. He said, he even said, I'm probably going to lose a third of my audience from even saying this about Elvis, but whatever, it is what it is. I know he didn't, at this point, he probably just didn't care. You know, he's just giving it raw and real about how he actually felt about the artists around his time. And basically he said all Elvis did was copy 
what we were doing. And he was doing our music and gave it to a white audience. He's like, you know, there's nothing original by his singing, nothing original by his dancing. I mean, black people have been doing that for centuries. So, you know, there's nothing really great about Elvis. And he said, uh, when people ask him, uh, do you think Elvis is the king? He's like, the king of what? Right? You know what I mean? And that's, like I said, the white people, they make stuff up. You know what I'm saying? They give, they give their own artists A's for effort and they give them extra credit and everything else and put them at the top. The same thing has happened with Eminem. You know, white people did that. They put him at the top too because, and the only reason they were able to do that is because black people gave Eminem enough clout and, and, and kissed his ass enough and, and, and dumb Negroes put him on a pedestal so then white people say, okay, I guess it's okay for us to say that Eminem is the greatest rapper. He's top five because enough dumb black people are doing it and enough dumb black rappers are doing it because they want to uh, keep some fame or try to get some fame off of Eminem themselves. So if they do it, it's okay for us to do it. And now uh, you've had all these interlopers jumping into hip hop and R&B and, and calling themselves the greatest and the best soul singers and and the best R&B artists and everything else, a bunch of corny ass white boys who don't sound like anything. Hip hop is a mess. The music is actually terrible now. It's not really even hip hop anymore. You just got some white boys uh, rapping about their drug use or whatever, and everyone thinks that that that's hip hop all of a sudden. A lot of it's trash. And and the, sad to say, a lot of the black rappers they're not any better either. But that's just what it is, and, and this is what happens when we let other people take control of our forms of music and entertainment. It does become trash and puts out a bunch of nonsense. And, and you know, the, what's a shame is the best rap that you'll find nowadays and the best hip-hop and the best R&B is usually by underground artists, artists who are not famous. And probably whatever the next musical form is going to be is going to come from the underground, just like the same way jazz, rock, and hip-hop did for us, you know, all that stuff started underground and it got to the mainstream somehow, but that's probably where it's going to be this, this time too. If, if the music industry doesn't suppress it, you know, cause right now I think we've been very stagnated with the music because the music industry itself has worked hard to suppress all the, the forms of music and everything that are out there. So that's, that's why everything sounds homogenized. That's why everything sounds the same and it's trash. And one of the main reasons is because the music industry got scared with the whole being able to download music thing. That kind of took away some of their control. So now everything is just stagnated. If you want to even get into the music industry, you got to be a damn freak of nature. You got to be like a little rump ranger X to get a, a music contract nowadays. So no talent needed, but we'll just put some, some uh, audio on you and just push your music over and over again on all these streaming services and earworm it into people's heads and that will make you popular it's not popular because uh, people actually like it it's just popular because the 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 crap is pumped into their heads 24 7 so you folks let me know how you feel about it in the comments section but i really like to hear your opinions on black music i know lasheed for you has done some amazing amazing videos about black music i've learned a lot from her and uh, the comedian Dwan B has also done some great videos about black music that are really amazing. I will also recommend his channel as well if you want to learn some stuff about black music. So both of those channels are great when it comes to learning and getting knowledge about our music. Because it is important to remember the artists that came before and to understand uh the timeline of our music so you don't think other people created it or other people are better than you or that someone maybe just came up with something out of the blue. You realize that we are the originators of something and you can see the timeline of where things came from because nowadays there's so much confusion out there. You got uh, ridiculous people telling you that they created hip hop or you know they think hip hop started in the 80s in New York, which is not true. Okay, hip hop has been going on was going on for way longer than that. It that was like when it finally crystallized. It had been going on way before that. Okay, so it's there's a lot that goes into these things, and if you don't know the history of where these musical art forms come from, or the artists that came before, maybe a lot of the artists that 
maybe never made it to the top, you know, that were influencing the ones that you do see, you're not going to have a good understanding of how music goes and you'll just believe anything the white media tells you. They'll make a dumbass movie like this Elvis movie and have you thinking that this is where rock and roll came from. And you don't know, have any idea where it really started. Anyway, Mad Black, and I will be back with my foot on these devil's back.